ready? Thank you. Um, excuse me, is that a decaf loose leaf organic green tea? I don't know. Let me see. It it still is in your. Hey, do you think he's single? My sister is looking. Of course he is. Did you see his teeth? <sighs> anyway, Rhonda, have you heard anything about cord blood banking? Well, as a matter of fact, I have. Steve and I decided to save Susie's cord blood. I never heard about it, but I had an interesting conversation with my doctor about it last month. <sighs> Come in. How are you doing today? Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Dr. Yes. Barner. Um, hey, I'm sorry Ryan couldn't be here. How's he doing? He's good. Okay, great. Well, everything looks good. We're measuring right on track for about 20 weeks gestation. We're able to determine the sex now. Would you like to know? No, I think we want to be surprised. Okay, it's your choice. So how are you feeling? Feeling well. Just been having weird cravings for chocolate dipped pickles. Surprisingly, that's not the first time I've heard that. But now there's something else I'd like to talk to you about. Cord blood banking. Have you ever heard of this before? No. Is something wrong with me? No. It's an optional procedure we perform after the birth of your baby. Some families choose to save the blood from the umbilical cord for future use. Basically, immediately after the umbilical cord is claimed and cut, I will withdraw blood from the umbilical cord. The blood is stored for future and can be used against various diseases. You have some options, so you and Ryan need to sit down and make some decisions. I have a brochure that I'd like to give you that talks about cord blood banking. Here you are, doctor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Here's the brochure. I'd like you to review this and look it over. Will this affect my current birth plan? Well, you need to remember that if you decide to have cord blood banking, the cord is cut before all the blood can be distributed to your child. Some women wish to wait until the umbilical cord stops pulsating so their child gets all the blood from the placenta. These women are not able to donate cord blood. However, medically, there is no evidence that this is beneficial to your baby. According to the U.S. Health and Human Services, your decision needs to be made between the 28th and 34th week of pregnancy so you can register for the procedure. You will also need to give informed consent for cord blood banking prior to your labor beginning. Please review the brochure I gave you. I hope this helps you make your decision. We can talk at your next appointment about any questions you or Ryan might have. Have a good day. I thought about my options and reviewed the brochure, and I'm now leaning towards a public option. I understand that it's basically a donation, and it's free to the individual. However, a physician may charge a small fee for the procedure. Currently, the American Academy of Pediatrics states physicians should recommend public banking of cord blood, but there's no personal use for the public option. So the reason I'm compelled to do this is because it seems the most ethical way of using my cord blood. Rhonda, why did you decide to go with a private bank? Well, Steve and I decided before we had little Susie that we wanted to have the option to use her cord blood in the event that someone in our family would need it. Heaven forbid one of our kids would get leukemia. But if they did, we would have this safe and effective option to treat. We looked at this as biological insurance for our family. So for us, it was an investment in the health and well-being of our future. Another reason we decided to go the public route was due to the expense of the private option. The cost of private banking is pretty significant. In my research, I found that the cost can range from about one to $2,000 with an annual storage fee of around $100. However, you are ensuring that the stem cells are available for your use at a later date. So the cost to us was definitely worth it. Some argue that private banks target individuals during a very emotional time, and they make people feel that this biological insurance is necessary. That is why I think it is great that you are thinking about this now and not waiting to the last minute. I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me about this controversial topic. I know my husband, was a little concerned about the unnecessary cost. That's a lot of money! One thing I really like about the public banking option is that I feel like I can give back to society. 
we're not sure we're going to have any other children, and if somebody else can benefit from the blood, then we would be really pleased. You need to remember confidentiality issues related to public banking. You are signing your child's genetic makeup over to someone else. How do you know they are going to use it for only treating these rare diseases? What if they find something wrong with your child's blood? Will they disclose that information to you or anyone else? One thing I did learn is that all facilities test for genetic disorders and infectious diseases. These places are required to report any abnormal results. I just need to make sure that I choose a credible organization. Yes, it takes a lot of research and whatever you decide will be the right thing for you and your family. Well, thanks for sharing your experiences with me. It sounds like my husband Ryan and I have a big decision to make. I couldn't help but overhear you ladies talking about cord blood banking. Hi, my name is John and I'm a cord blood banker. Cord blood banking is a fairly new practice starting in 1991 in New York. It is still a very controversial issue. Cord blood is easy to collect, no pain or risk to the mother or the infant, and the collected blood stem cells are available within days after collection, should you need them. It can be successfully stored for at least 15 years, but there is no research on its benefits after 15 years. There are now hundreds of cord blood banks worldwide, and there are options in private banking and public options. Have you or anyone you know ever suffered from leukemia, lymphoma, myelodysplasia, aplastic anemia, hemoglobinopathies, or metabolic storage diseases? Did you know that stem cells preserved by cord blood banking can be used to help treat these disorders for just a modest upfront cost and a minimal annual fear even at no cost to you? You can help prevent or drastically reduce the costs associated with these diseases. There are many misconceptions about cord blood banking. The reality is that possible new discoveries of how to use stem cells from cord blood banking look promising. Expecting mothers need to weigh the options and make decisions early in the pregnancy, private versus public. They even have the option to do nothing. Core blood banking is a serious decision that requires serious thought. There are many misconceptions about cord blood banking. <laughs> anyway, Rhonda, have you heard anything about this? Men. Hey, it's good to see you this afternoon. Hey, Dr. Barner. Clean my hands. Okay, let's do it again. One thing I really like about the public banking option is I feel we're really giving back to Can society. Say, we're not sure oh, we're going to have any other children. Oh, come on. Maya? Heaven forbid one of our kids would get leukemia, but if they did... Uh -uh.